every data visualization in the world tells a data story. The truth is though that not all of them are very good. Let's walk through all the steps we're going to take to transform this bad data story into a good one. This is a column chart based on this study from Cambridge University Press, Bogs, Bones, and Bodies, the Deposition of Human Remains in Northern European Myers. A link to where you can get the data yourself is included in the description below. Now you could throw this data into Tableau, ggplot, Power BI, or any other number of tools and likely get an initial chart that looks very similar to this. Cluttered axis labels, disorganized bars, and a very uninspired story. There is a story here, it's just not a very good one. And that's the thing with data storytelling. Right off the bat, you are telling a story. The, the very fact that we are interpreting this data into a chart at all is a story. But like any good piece of prose, a story needs to be iterated upon, edited, refined in order to find the real value of the story you're trying to tell. So I'm going to walk through the steps I took to tell a better story with this data. The very first thing we're going to do, and this is generally a good idea to do with any bar chart that you're building, is organize the bars. Right off the bat, there's a clearer story here. Everything is orderly and you can tell which preservation state is the most abundant, which is the least abundant. We still have very disorganized labels though. More often than not, your best bet when you're running into overly long labels in your bar charts is just to swap it to a horizontal bar chart. Now we can easily read every one of these labels on the left side of the bar chart. We can now make additional design decisions to clarify our story and really highlight what matters most. For instance, this x-axis line down here, we don't really need it, so let's get rid of it. Once that's gone, we can add in these nice, subtle, dashed grid lines. This helps us compare these lines even better, and it looks quite nice too. From here, we can choose a color for the bars that might be a little bit more appropriate for our for the story we're trying to tell. In this case, I went to iColorPalette.com and found a color from the word bog, and it gave me this color here, and I looked through all the available colors that were here and settled on you know a tangential color that I thought looked nice and that's the color we have in our bar chart now. From here, we can style our axis labels here, make them easier to read and help them look much more professional. That looks much better. We've made them all caps case and they look nice and authoritative on the left side of the chart. From there, let's add in labels to the end of all these bars. It looks very nice. Now you can see exactly what number these bars represent. We'll, we'll put a label down on the x-axis, which is appropriate here. And we don't really need a label for the, for the y-axis now because we'll take care of that in the title which is going to be a very clear title that lets us know what insight matters most in this chart. Bog mummies are the most frequently observed preservation state. And we'll throw in a caption so you can click it and get right to the source right here. And what we're left with is a really attractive chart that might look really good in an article, perhaps on Medium or on the web somewhere. It's right in with some story you might be writing about the preservation states of remains found in Northern European Myers between 9000 BC and 1900 AD. The steps we took here can be done in nearly every data visualization tool out there from Tableau to D3 to ggplot to Power BI. And there weren't that many to transform a really unreadable chart into something that's really quite powerful. The devil's in the details when it comes to data storytelling. If you pay attention to these details, you'll end up coming away with a really strong chart. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.